with us here today for our out of the box talk in the Dell Services booth. I want to start by going back to the future a little bit and talking about your childhood. So, Michael, you're famous. Do you want us to lie down for that? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Um, Michael, when you were a youngster growing up in Houston, you ran an electronic bulletin board system out of your room until your parents found the, oh, the whoa, phone whoa, bill. Whoa. <laughs> we had a little bit of excitement here. A lot of activity. Yeah, Fifteen um, Dell security guys caught it. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, um, you got away with the electronic bulletin board system until your parents found the phone bill and realized you, you know, hooked up another line. And, Mark, when you were in high school, you actually programmed for Atari. And I'm dying to know, did you build Pitfall or Asteroids? No, I didn't. But I did. I did. I did. I did. That's how I. Was. Actually, my. You know what's interesting, Clyde, is that Michael and my experiences in high school were remarkably similar. Now, of course, quite a few of those we can't discuss here in this forum. But the ones that we can, we both actually wandered into a Radio Shack store of all things and found a TRS-80 Model One with 4K and started kind of hacking on that and programming that as kind of the first thing. And then we both had Apple II uh, computers and started. And then that's actually when we started to uh, diverge. I did go off into the you know Atari world and started programming uh, arcade games. So how did those early experiences in digital collaboration, you've talked a little bit about it, Mark, but Michael, how did that influence what would someday become Dell for you? You know, what, what I saw, in the electronic bulletin board, and I, I was kind of fortunate uh, in seventh grade in my math class, my teacher had the first teletype terminal in our school. So we were writing programs and sending away the program, the answer would come back, and I was fascinated by that. It turns out that, you know, on, on the way home, there was a radio shack. And so I would, you know, ride my bike there, and eventually they threw me out because I didn't buy anything. But, <laughs> Uh, I, I did. I did uh, ultimately, uh, you know, get a get a PC and built one of these bulletin boards. And I saw this incredible interaction. People all over at that time it was all over the country. And you see all this sharing of ideas and information, and you know, uh, pretty geeky stuff for sure. Uh, people with mutual interests. Uh, but you know, it's it's sort of a, a much earlier version of the collaboration and all the social things that are going on today. This is way before CompuServe or the Source or AOL or any of that stuff. But you know, when when we saw those things coming and we saw the internet, you know, it, it was very apparent that oh boy, this is this is going to be big. So speaking, but, oh, go ahead, Martin. Isn't, isn't that kind of the seminal thing? I mean, for me, I was in high school. I'm writing software. And, publishing software, you get a computer and you go, whoa, how can I build one of these myself? I mean, that never even crossed my mind. How, how did that come about? Well, when I, when I got my first computer, I, I took it apart. I wanted to see how it worked. I mean, isn't that how you learn how everything works? And I'd actually been doing this since I was a little kid, and my parents were always afraid I was going to electrocute myself. And sometimes when I take things apart, I'd actually put them back together, but not always. But this one I, I had put back together and, you know, sort of learned about all the different circuits. And the great thing about those early computers is they were actually quite simple, and you could get a book from Texas Instruments that would explain what every chip did and you could sort of figure it out and you could modify them and change them. Then what I discovered is, is I, as I started you know, taking these things apart is that the parts that went inside the computers weren't actually made by the companies themselves that, that, that had their name on the outside, whether it was Apple or IBM or whoever. And, and then I started looking at you know, the, how much the parts actually cost and what the computer sold for, and there was an enormous difference, and that struck me as being kind of wrong. And, and, uh, and you know, that was really the genesis of, of uh, Dell in 1984. Yeah, and and, and that, that seminal point is the most interesting thing to me, because it's not at all how I think. I, would, I didn't really even look inside the computer. I didn't really start to take apart the computer. I was actually looking at the operating system. I was in, I was writing assembly language. I was doing something we had called player missile graphics, you know, which is kind of 
you know, um, you know, these kind of shoot 'em up games. How you actually get the one graphical element crosses another graphical element, and it creates a uh, a, tr a uh, operation change uh, at the, the microprocessor level. And when I talked to Michael, that insight that he had then, you know, I, I. Uh, I'm just so impressed. I, I never even thought about that. You know, my, my world, I was all about software. And so that this is really the first time a software person and a hardware person would be able to get on stage together, actually, which is what's so exciting about this. So we've talked about software, hardware. When did you first dream of the cloud, and what was your first vision of the cloud, Mark? Well, I, you know, one of the things that I was so completely... Um, you know, I had a lot of the same experiences Michael had in terms of the bulletin boards, CompuServe, um, uh, Apple Talk, you know, which was a very early uh, a vendor network, and um, AOL. But I think that the thing that was really interesting for me was Amazon.com and eBay. I think when you saw Amazon.com and eBay, what you saw was very robust functionality. That was very easy to use. And they had incredible scalability, reliability, availability challenges, functionality challenges, and every day they were doing new releases, new upgrades, new updates. But of course, as end users, we don't know about that. We're just you know, using the new version. And I said, wow, why can't we write business software you know, with the functionality? You know, instead of buying a book, I'm managing my customer information. And so what, for each of you, is your true definition of cloud, and what is cloud not? Michael, you want to start? Or Mark, you look eager, ready to go. No, he's ready. Well, I actually want to go back to your, to your prior question, because what I remember is... We are very good at not answering questions, by yeah, the way. Yeah, exactly. We, yeah, and you know, the other thing I've learned is that when you have the microphone, you can say yeah. whatever you want. And, right. And, you know, yeah. so, so let's go back to the other question. And, and what I remember is, yeah. is uh, you know, we had the, obviously the internet predated the World Wide Web. But when the World Wide Web started, there was actually no browser for Windows for the World Wide Web. You had to have Unix to, to go on the World Wide Web. And so I loaded Unix on a Dell machine at my house and said, I'm going to figure out this World Wide Web thing because this sounds like really important. And I bought a t-shirt online. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to the CERN website because it was pretty much the only one they had. right? And, and, and then there, you know, more websites were popping up. And, and the immediate thought that I had was we were always looking for a way to have an electronic collaboration and, quite frankly, sell things to customers. And, you know, uh, we created Dell.com. Amazon was, you know, selling things online. And, and uh, you know, that, that was just fantastic. That's the natural extension of just, Dell Direct. Just the natural, point, you know, right, yeah. selling directly to customers. Now yeah. we're going to sell online. This was, like, right. incredible. This was, like, rocket fuel for our engine. And that, that was incredibly exciting. But coming back to your question about the cloud, I look at cloud today as an enormous enabler of the next generation of, of benefits in, in, in IT. And I thought Paul Moritz did a great job. You know, certainly there is an element of hype that, that goes around. I know Mark is never involved in the hype, but, but uh, there, there are occasionally some elements of hype. But if you look at the practical ability of customers to more rapidly capture benefits in their business, and this is what Salesforce.com does, this is what we see in a lot of these cloud services, that's fantastic. And that is accelerating all of the benefits of IT and helping companies ultimately realize their potential and do the things that they want to do faster. When I think about cloud, what I think about is, uh, you know, very much how it started for me. My definition fundamentally hasn't changed. When I go back to Amazon and eBay, when they started to basically, you know, emerge, which was, uh, uh, I would say it was 93, 94, 95, right as these browsers actually started to get the windows at Mac and the website started to get more mature. And uh, people like um, Pierre Omidar and Jeff Bezos and, and Mark Andreessen really started to push the envelope of here's the enabling technology and here's the end user product. Today, you, know, you just have to look at Facebook. Here is a company 
that is about to deliver an application, an application to a billion users around the world, and who's delivering 100 billion transactions a day. That's a lot of transactions. They use dominantly technology you know, from Dell. 100 billion transactions. It's not proprietary technology. They have a whole website so that you can see exactly what the Facebook data centers and all of that architecture looks like. Then they enable... And it's mission critical for my 17-year-old daughter, I can assure you. <laughs> and then they enable... Well, and it's also mission critical for a lot of people right now in Egypt, in Tunisia, you know? That's true. You know, uh, on in Tel Aviv and in Wall Street. And it's, 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 for sure, it's changing the world. But the thing about it is, it's that architecture. It's the same architecture in many ways as Amazon and eBay. It's multi-tenant, it's shared, it scales. You don't upgrade, you don't update. And there's applications that are built on that platform, on the Facebook platform, that you just get the automatic benefit from, right? You, you don't have to, you're not installing stuff like we used to do. We used to go down to this thing called Egghead Software, buy the software, come back to our house, put it in. We don't do that anymore. We used to have these things called disks. You remember these things? We don't have disks anymore. Disks. Yeah. We had, first of all, we had five and a quarter inch floppy disks. Oh, no, first we had cassette tapes. You know, then we had five and a quarter inch floppy disks. Then we had the three and a half inch disks. Then we had the CDs and the DVD. All of that's gone, you know? And now, you, when you have a new platform, you know, that, that, that platform, what's exciting is you can install an app. How many people here are on Facebook, by the way? Can you raise your hand if you have a Facebook account? Yeah. How many of you have put an application on your Facebook account uh, off the net? Yeah. So there's a few here. And, you know, I think that's what's so interesting. And then you look at, you know, again, more high transaction, high volume platforms like Twitter, like others. These are setting the stages. What does the future of computing look like? Look at that. Look at those kinds of plat multi-tenant shared platforms that are ubiquitous, that are democratic, that are easy to use, and uh, that are that support mobile, that support um, the social experience. That that's cloud computing. Okay, I'm going to come on stage with you because we're going to do a little lightning round wordplay here. And I'm going to ask you to move down in front of our illustrator, Lisa. Oh, yeah. All right, so please Thank face you, the audience for this. So I'm going to give you five words, one at a time. And wait, each... wait, oh, here we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pretty geeky. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to give you a word, and you're going to shout out... Mark's ready to shout. You're I'm ready. looking psyched there. Uh, we're going to shout out. Because he's a little faster at shouting than I am. So, yeah, I All right. So, so Mark, like, do like a nanosecond delay before you shout. Yours. Shout the first word that comes to mind. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Is the audience ready? All right. Thunder. Lightning. Well, I had the same one. That's not fair. <laughs> I thought for sure you one of you would say delay. cloud. Oh. All right. All right. Wow. I gave you the softball. Let's Good try idea. another one. All right. Well, you are not in Radio Shack, are you? Hey, I this actually ran guess. JCL Batch. This is my batch. guess. This I is my guess. I ran JCL Batch jobs right out of saying, college. I'm just I saying. I know how to program. When we say thunder, we say lightning. All right. Thermal. You say thermal? Thermal. I was going to say thermal scientific. Thermal. Thermal energy? Okay, that works. Mark, come on. I would say geothermal. All right. I would have said grease. That's what you put inside a server. Okay, oh. basic. Basic programming. Oh, it's got the same thing. You would have said, you would have said programming? All right. Open. Capable and affordable. <laughs> Michael's got his marketing down. What did you say? <laughs> open, open, capable, capable affordable. Open, capable, affordable. It's what we do at Dell, Mark. Okay. Open, <laughs> capable, affordable. Say right. it. Yes. Repeat after open, me. Capable, open, capable, capable affordable. Okay, open. okay, you got it. Ready? Yes. One more yes. time. Yes. Open. Yes. Capable, capable and, and affordable. affordable. Right, right. You got it. All right, last That's one. Awesome. Fabric. Clothing. 10 gig, 40 gig, force 10. I think we have actually... Right. I know, you, I know. You just did a really Fabric good job. Fabric networking. You did a good job, Colette, of actually illuminating cloud computing. Because in cloud computing, we don't know about these things. We think fabric is for suits. We think open is for door. You know, in cloud computing, we're all about the fundamental function of computing. 
you know, so... Well, and what it illustrates is everyone's got a definite, different definition of it, too. Well, I think that the power is, is that, that that's kind of the two, the two worlds, right? Where we have a world of incredibly important technologies. You know, we use Dell. We run Salesforce.com exclusively on Dell. And thank you, by the way. We appreciate that. Oh, we're happy, we're happy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And that that's that's incredibly powerful for us, you know? And we need that technology to enable our end users. But I've programmed my mind to try to be more like my customers. He's programmed his mind to be more like his customers, right? So his customer is me. My customer is you know, the 100,000 enterprise that use Salesforce.com every day, and I'm just thinking about fabric is for suit. I didn't realize that fabric meant something, you know, really complicated. I should, like, get back into that. <laughs> All right, I'll let you guys work that out later. Final question for you is, you both started your companies to solve a fundamental problem that no one else had solved before. What's the one problem that you want to tackle now or have someone else tackle for you? You have a few. You know, I, I think that if I look at what's going on in, in the world today, there are lots of challenges, whether it's in healthcare or energy or the environment or how do you create jobs. I still have this fundamental belief that technology is the answer to all those problems. And so there are lots of problems out there in the world. If you look at the biggest scientific problems in, in, the, in the world, I look at those essentially as computational problems. And while we may not have the scientists at Dell to go solve all those problems, we get to make the computing power that's going to go solve all those problems. And that to me is tremendous exciting. I think the number and, one... And we're going to do it in the cloud too, so okay. <laughs> The number one thing that's on my mind right now is actually the economy and jobs. I, I want to see more jobs coming back into this country. I, I'm very worried about great manufacturers like Dell and others. How do we encourage them to bring the manufacturing back to the United States? And I had an interesting uh, conversation on Tuesday night with a very interesting entrepreneur named Henrik Fisker, who's building a next generation oh, car. No. Yeah, but he's actually building the factory here in the United States. So is uh, you know Tesla has built their new car here. I was actually uh, at General Motors in Detroit last week. They have an amazing new car, a, a Chevrolet Volt. The Chevy Volt is probably the most advanced car, I think, in the world in terms of technology today. I've ne I, I have one now for six months. I haven't put a drop of gas in it. It's amazing. And we build that right here in the U.S. And if we can build the Chevy Volt in the U.S., why can't we build everything here? And I think we need to rebirth the manufacturing sector. We need to rebirth the energy sector. We need to rebirth the healthcare sector, something that Michael's been spending a lot of time uh, working on, and, and several other areas of the economy. And, and what I'm really worried about is that our government is kind of so detached and so disassociated from all of this that um, they, they don't have their attention on that. That, and that, that's what's really bothering me. And we, we talked about that recently. And if you saw the keynote, we just did a Q&A in London. And uh, Michael has some incredibly important insights around that. If you haven't seen that, uh, it's on YouTube. And it's really worth... Uh, Really, do you want to add anything about uh, that? You would like to make a political statement here, well, like only, I did? The only thing I would say is I had a lot of fun with you in London, and, and uh, yeah. that, was a, that was a great chat. You know, I sent it, I sent it to my kids because I like them to kind of stay up to date on what's going on. And um, one of my kids wrote back, I really like Mark Socks. <laughs> So I, I don't think we I don't again think, the I don't fabric think I, thing it didn't quite get through. But you had these very colorful socks. Back to the fabric. Do you have this today again? Yeah, I do. There, there's the socks again. No, there, there are. Shot yeah. of these yeah. socks. So okay. the socks going. Yeah. We gotta make sure, Lisa, we get the socks in the illustration. Yeah. Well, Mark and Michael, thank you so much. Lisa, you. thank you for the thank brilliant you. illustration, and um, we really appreciate you being here in the Dell Services booth for an out of the Great. box talk today. Great. Thanks so for thank having you. us. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Collaboration. Oh yeah, Shasta. Of course. Wow. Technology is the answer. Thermal energy.
Oh yeah, oh it's great, very small.